Welcome back, guys. I've been really naughty. I've been out shopping again. But I thought I'd share it with you guys before I get in too much trouble. The first part, when you buy new Swarovski gear, is you gotta get it past the gatekeeper, i.e. the boss, and sneak it into your room. Nothing. Is that you? No, I've had it for ages. All right, so today I just really wanted to give you guys a little bit of a uh, kind of first impressions um, look at the new BTX. So I won't bore you with the unboxing. You gotta buy two parts. There's two boxes. Well, here we are, the Swarovski BTX. What a beast. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name's Daz. Um, if you like this kind of content, hit the bell icon and subscribe, and that way you don't miss anything that we put out in the future. Um, today I'm just going to go through uh, kind of front to back and my first impressions about the, um, the Swarovski BTX. Uh, let's just start down the front here real quick. It comes with a nice big lens cover. This is the 85mm objective down the front. Uh, sunshade, just like most spotting scopes, obviously if you're doing a bit of last light, first lighting, you're getting those big angles of light hitting that front lens, this is going to help you out a fair bit there. Um, you can just retract it back in. Moving along, you've got the focus wheel here. Um, you'll notice on some spotting scopes, you've got that kind of little, tiny little focus wheel. Here you've got a nice massive focus ring and it is, it's buttery smooth. It's a nice feature. I find that gloves, no gloves, um, it's been really nice to use. And in terms of um, uh, your focus control, it's actually quite a shallow depth of field on this. So for instance, in the backyard, I had some birds in the backyard I was observing and they were pretty close, like 30, 40 meters. And if you've used um, kind of really nice photography lenses, you'll know that depth of field, it really, you get that background separation. And I could, I could see like even the finest little hairs just behind the beak and all the little you know, insects that it was picking up. And it's an absolute pleasure to use. So um, the, the thing to note with this, with the, the STX and the ATX, the BTX, they all use the same modular front. So you can obviously go down to your 60 mil sizes right up to your 95s. Um, and they're all interchangeable. But on the other eyepieces, you've got your variable zooms. Now, these ones, obviously this is fixed, so this is gonna give me, a, I think it's a 35 power zoom in there, which is, is kind of optimal, I think. In Australia here, we get a lot of um, haze from the eucalypt haze, so punching in beyond that often, it kind of does get washed out. So I find personally that kind of 20 to 35 is the sweet spot for our conditions. Um, so yeah, just that is one thing to note. Um, over this side, you've got a little um, a screw wheel there you can back off and that'll give you your, obviously your cant there. And if you listen, you hear those notches. So you, it does snap to position there. And you can screw that off. Um, and then obviously we're back to the BTX unit itself. So I'll spin this around so you can get a closer look at it. Back here, we've got another set of lens caps that have got a nice little tether on them so you're not gonna lose them. And they just pop down out of the way. Um, when I first saw this, uh, well, it was probably, I don't know, three, four years ago at the Sydney SHOT Show, uh, I kind of thought, what's this thing at the top here? It looks a little bit plasticky, a little bit gimmicky, but in actual fact, this is to support uh, up on the brow here when you're looking through the scope. And uh, it's, a, it's a game changer. You can move it in and out here. And, uh, and honestly, having that extra support there, you don't realize how much of a difference that makes um, just keeping the, your eye centered in there. If you ever look through a spotting scope, you know, get those little kind of black rings when you move around. Um, it just irons all that out and you just get that really crisp, nice focal point and you're staying dead center on the edge and just having that extra contact point, it just smoothens things up a little bit. Um, you've got this little outrigger kind of looking thing here. Um, that's your sighting glass. So it's a really handy tool. I haven't had that on any other scopes that I've had, but often if you're looking through a straight scope, it's pretty obvious where you're looking. And when you have found something and then you look away and look for location, you can see exactly where you are. With angled scopes, sometimes it can be a bit disorientating when you spent you know, two or three hours and you finally found something and then you look up and you're like, oh, where am I? Where is this like kind of looking into? So in reverse, obviously, if you see a point of interest or some movement, you can get on it really fast because you can just zoom in, look through there. You've got a little dot with a star around it. Um, and then obviously when you look through, you are bang on in the position that you want to be looking at. Around the back here, obviously what I noticed um, with all myself and a lot of mates using it and we're all taking in turns is that everyone's obviously eyes at a different distance apart. So how Swarovski have combated that is they've got the adjustability here. 
so for people with their eyes a bit closer together and then all the way out if they're really far apart. And then just like your binos, your eye cups here can track in and out. So if you're wearing glasses or if you want to adjust that, that distance from your pupa relief, you can do that here. Um, Diped is in the same spot just like you're familiar with on your binos. And lastly, um, we've got the, the button down here which obviously unkeys the two pieces. So to use that, just push the button in. Um, obviously this is the piece that's mounted to the spotting scope. So just give it a kind of a quarter twist and it will come clean off there. It's very similar to um, camera mechanisms on, on, re on removable lenses like on your DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Um, you've got your, obviously your caps. Uh, and you'll note if you have a close look at that to put it back together, um, just like on the camera systems, there's a little white dot there and the corresponding little white dot over here. So you just line them up, push it into that spigot and give it a quarter turn and she'll lock back on again. Um, there's your little uh, actuator for your button. So obviously you've got caps here to cover that up as well. Keep all the dust out. It makes it a bit easier to transport if, or if, um, if you've bought the other modules, you can you can put obviously your camera, um, switch objectives, etc. And um, yeah, they just pop into there. Come on, which way are you going? Obviously that's got a key into, should be that way, it is. And they are the two units. So Swarovski BTX with the 85 mil objective. Um, let's do a bit of magic and uh, go into the field. Well, I've got to love a bit of movie magic. Just one click of the button and here we are, six hours from my place. Um, we are right up in the north part of the state, um, foothills of the Great Dividing Range. We've got a big, beautiful opposing face. So I can see an eagle up there, big wedge-tailed eagle soaring over the top. That's pretty cool. And uh, all morning I've just been watching some deer kind of cruise along this fringe here. And it's a with this, it's a really powerful tool to be able to sit back away from those animals that I don't want to put pressure on yet. I just want to do a bit of assessment and see what's around. So from here, I'm not, um, you know, scenting it up. I can really let the glass do the walking and that's 830 meters over there. And, you know, from, uh, if I, if I want to move in on it, I can grab my rifle and, and poke around, but this, this just really reaches in there and I can see all the little bits into the bush. There's really nowhere I can't kind of look through the, that tundra over there and really see what's in there. So yeah, oh, this is kind of me for the morning. Um, I've already had a lot of fun this morning, so I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy and um, see what happens. There's a heap of kangaroos and just behind me, I've got a beautiful opposing face and there's a heap of bird life in here. So it's just a shame I can't see, uh, show you what I can see through this glass with the camera. So the camera is nice and sharp and all, but what I see through here is just next level. It's an absolute pleasure to, um, to look through. And honestly, if you can get your hands on one of these and have a look, I highly recommend you have a go because it's, uh, it'll, it'll just blow your mind. It is honestly, it's amazing. How good is this? It's a beautiful day, sunshine, still nice, cool, southeasterly breeze through here. There's animals moving around because it's so cold. They're all active during the day. All right, so there's a good example. I'm looking at a wombat, and just to the left of the wombat, I can see two crimson rosellas. I mean, those things are the size, body size of probably a tennis ball, and I can clearly make them out. I can see their faces, all the coloration on them. And if I range that, that's gotta be over 800 there. That's 823 meters. That's pretty impressive. And the wombat, you can see all the detail. You can see its ears swiveling. It's, um, yeah, it's mind blowing. It's pretty awesome. How good is this? If you're kind of guy that likes to do a bit of fringe work and just sit back and pick out, you know, across the face, this is kind of perfect. You can just move along here. Um, I've been out on this property here just uh, looking for wild dogs and foxes as well. And um, yeah, they move around a fair bit. So I can just move along these faces, sit back in glass and glass and glass and just check everything out. So a few things to consider if you are looking at one of these is um, obviously they're bulky and they're pretty heavy as well. Now, I suppose there's yeah, the pros and cons of that. Um, one thing for me personally, I've got a favorite tripod that weighs well under 800 grams and it's what that camera's sitting on right now and I love it. 
and I can't use that with this. Uh, if you do, you've really got to baby it because it's quite top heavy. So you're probably gonna to have to go up in your tripod um, diameter and of course that adds weight. Um, you also, it's much nicer having some kind of fluid head on here, which also adds a bit of weight. So just something to, to consider, they are pretty heavy. So if you're kind of using this in, with the intention of backpack, um, I'd probably recommend to go for something lighter, even a set of say 15s. I use the Swarovski uh, 15s a fair bit. Um, or if you're gonna team up and work with a buddy, maybe, you know, share it, have one guy carrying the rifle, one guy carrying the, the tripod set up and that might be the way to go. But um, yeah, together, this, this combination I've got here, I've just got a set of 10s here. This is the 10 by 42 EL range. Um, this kind of does all the leg work. It's got obviously that GPS and tracking feature built into it as well. And um, these paired together um, for what I'm doing here is, is uh, yeah, it's a bomber combination, that's for sure. Well, that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review and uh, found something useful in there. And maybe if you're considering purchasing one of these, um, like when I bought it, there wasn't much uh, info on there. So hence the reason I'm doing this video to help some other people out. So if you like this type of content and, um, and you want to see more of it, just, yeah, hit that subscribe or the like button or um, leave any questions you've got in the comments below and I'll try and help out where I can. Too easy, guys. Take care. Uru.